I come from a family of five generations of teachers. I love learning and development. And this conversation is all about developing yourselves. Now, speaking of this, how many of you are comfortable with rejection? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, we've got a couple of people. All right, good for you. <laughs> how many of you like gifts? Raise your hand. Okay, that's better. All right, I love gifts. I love getting gifts. I love receiving gifts. Mostly receiving gifts. But when I was little, I didn't like gifts that much. Why? When I was in first grade, uh, in first grade, my teacher came up with this brilliant idea. Brilliant. That she wanted us to not only get in gifts, but to also learn the virtue of complimenting each other at the same time. So she had all of us come to the front of the classroom, the 40 of us. She said, hey, why don't you guys say nice things about each other? If you hear your name called by someone else, you get a gift and sit down. And she bought all of us gifts. What a great idea, right? What could go wrong? <laughs> when it started, it was great. Every time I heard someone else's name was called, and I'll be like, yay, when it's my turn. Then there were 20 people left and 10 left. At the end, there were three left. No more compliments, just silence. And I was one of them. You know, at that moment, I didn't want the gifts anymore. I didn't want the compliments anymore. I just want to sit down. And I was crying. I had no idea why no one was saying anything nice about me. I thought I was cool. I thought I was popular. Then I saw who was standing next to me. I knew otherwise because I hated those two kids. <laughs> and the teacher was freaking out. She was like, oh my God, will anyone say anything nice about these people? No? OK, why don't you just go get a gift and sit down? Um, you guys behave better next year so someone will say something nice about you. I bet he didn't take the vital smart training. Um, <laughs> ever since that day, I would just die not to be in that situation again, getting rejected in public. But I don't know who felt worse that day. It was that me or my teacher. She probably realized that her team building event turned into this roast of three six-year-olds. You know, without the humor, when people get roasted, it's supposed to be funny. There's just nothing funny about that day. So that was when I was a six-year-old. And fast forward um, eight years, I was 14. I changed. I grew up. You know, I live in Silicon Valley now. Everything there is about versions, you know, version 1.0 and 2.0. <laughs> so that was version 1.0 of Java. So eight, eight years later, I got an upgrade, um, version 2.0, <laughs> by this guy. Do you know who he is? Bill Gates, that's right. Um, no, he didn't personally upgrade me. Um, that would be pretty cool. Um, he came to Beijing, to China, to promote Windows 95. I heard him speak. I, I just loved that guy. I loved everything about him. This entrepreneurial story, this idea of using technology to change the world. So I said, OK. That, let, that night, I wrote a letter to my family telling them, oh, OK, I, I got my life figured out. Don't worry about me. By age 25, I would build the biggest company in the world, and I would buy Microsoft. You know, I, I didn't make this up. My family uh, kept this letter for me and for all these years, and they sent it to me when I was 30. They were like, have you done this? Um, <laughs> this is the letter. Um, by the way, you don't have to sort of read it. It's really bad handwritten Chinese. Um, but I did has to highlight some keywords for you, so you know what I'm talking about. In that letter, I also said, someday I will go to the United States to fulfill that dream, uh, because it's the, the land of opportunities, and that's also where Bill Gates lived. Um, I want to beat him on his home, co um, home, home court. And so two years later, I was given the chance of coming to the US, and I jumped on it. And so that was when I was 16. I thought, that's the start of a great entrepreneurial journey. Someday, someone would write a book about me, like I'm this great immigrant entrepreneur from, uh, from, from China. And then fast forward another 14 years. One day I woke up, I was 30. <laughs> nope, I didn't build the biggest company in the world. I didn't even start. And worse yet, I felt completely stuck at work. Why? It was like every time I had this new idea, every time I wanted to do something, whether to step out of work or within my company. I want to have a, make a new proposal. I want to speak in front of people. There was a constant battle between a six-year-old and a 14-year-old. One wanted to change the world. Another was afraid of rejection. 
And guess what? Every time that six-year-old won. When you think about training and development, I, I'm, a, I was, I'm a self-development junkie. I read tons of books. But when it matters, none of those knowledge came to me. What came to me was memories. And my memories was about rejection. So, and this... Remember, this um, fear even stayed with me after I started my own company. So I, I quit my job and started my own uh, firm when I was 30. Uh, if you meet Bill Gates, you have to start sooner or later, right? Um, just when I, a few months into my venture, I was rejected with the investment. I thought for sure I wasn't going to get. And I, I wanted that so bad, I even dreamed about it five different times. But when the, but when the rejection came, it was just a one-liner email from the investor that said, nope, we're not going to do this. You know, at that moment, I remember I was in a, a restaurant with a friend celebrating uh, her birthday. When I saw that email, I had to just stood up and walk out so people wouldn't, they wouldn't see me crying in front of them. I really didn't know why I was hurt this bad. I thought I was tough. I thought I was prepared. I was smart. I got a good team. But at that moment, the six-year-old was standing on my shoulder again, just whispering to my ears. He was like, hey, who do you think you are? You want to be an entrepreneur? That's for geniuses like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. You are just a wannabe. You should quit now before you embarrass yourself more. At that moment, it would just dawn on me. Okay, would Bill Gates want to give up after a rejection like that? Would anyone successful at anything want to give up after a rejection like that? No. I mean, I could keep going. I can keep build a better team, a better product. But I got to be a better person. I got to be a better leader. I, have, I, cannot get, I cannot have that rejection problem keep going for me. I have to put that six-year-old back to his place so he wouldn't talk to me anymore. So what did I do? I, I searched online. You know, Google's my friend. Um, <laughs> I searched, how do you overcome your fear of rejection? You know, I saw a bunch of articles written by psychologists. You know, where's your fear and pain coming from? I was like, okay, that wasn't that helpful. Um, <laughs> Then I saw a bunch of articles written by sales gurus, just like screaming to my face, rah-rah articles. And they're like, hey, don't take rejection personally, just move on, overcome it. I'm like, who doesn't know that? If it was that simple, why was I still so afraid? Then I saw a website, it's called rejectiontherapy.com. Now that was interesting. <laughs> so I take a look. If it's those of you who don't know, rejection therapy was this game invented by this Canadian entrepreneur. And he's got some real rejection issues. So, so he came up with this game of a deck of 30 cards. Each card will give you a suggestion to get rejected at something. The idea is if you get, go look for rejection, instead of running away, you do it for 30 days. By the end of it, you will desensitize yourself from the pain of rejection. And, and you become this badass. I'm like, that's the best idea I've ever heard. I want to be a badass, you know? I'm gonna be the baddest ass of them all. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do this. But instead of doing this for 30 days, how about if I do this for 100 days? Let me overdose on rejection. <laughs> I wanna see what happens. Um, instead of doing this uh, just by myself, I'm gonna film myself and put this on YouTube and make a video blog or vlog out of this thing. That's how they call it nowadays. Um, because if I do it by myself, I'll quit pr pretty easily. But if I have a community or people you know, watching me, I will hope, they will hold me accountable. So that's what I did. Uh, this was the website, what it looked like then. Um, and um, um, looked better now. So rejection one, borrow $100 from a stranger. <laughs> OK. So my office is in downtown Austin at the time. So one day, I just came down. I said, OK, I'm going to do this. Um, who do I do this to? Oh. I saw a guy in the lobby. He was sitting behind a desk. He was a big guy. I'm like, and he looked like a security guard. I'm like, okay, I can do this. That's my target. So I was walking toward him. I was like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Then when I, when I was getting closer, I just slowed down. <laughs> and my heart started to pound. The hair at the back of my neck stood up. And when I was there, I was like, uh, it was a mess. I was like, uh, sir, can I borrow $100 from you? He looked up. He was like, no. <laughs> Why? I said, no, sorry, no, bye. I just turned around, just ran as fast as I could. I was so embarrassed. But the thing about doing a video blog is everything you do, you have to do it twice. 
Because that night, I have to upload the video, right? I have to edit it. I have to. Um, um, I was like this NFL scout looking at the game film frame by frame to see what happened. First of all, I saw myself. I was so scared. I looked like the kid from the movie Sixth Sense. You know, <laughs> I saw dead people. <laughs> Then I saw this guy, right? He was a big guy, but he wasn't like a menacing figure. And he said no, but he had a. He didn't have a club. He didn't get a pepper spray. He didn't cuss me out. He didn't call the police. He just said no. He asked me why. So he was inviting me to explain myself. At that moment, I could have said many things. I could have said, "Well, I'm trying to overcome my fear of rejections here," <laughs> or I could have said, "Well, I'm trying to have some fun," or I could have said, "Hey,、um, if you can't do 100, can you do 50? 25? 5 You can do 5 bucks, can you?" <laughs> I could have said all these things. But all those crucial conversations, no, I forgot about them. All I thought about was run. I'm like, hmm, this is like the microcosm of my whole life. Every time I got the slightest rejection, I would run as fast as I could. So I said, tomorrow, no matter what happens, I'm not going to run. I'm going to stay engaged. I will chat. I'll see what happens. So uh, uh, rejection two,、um, request a burger refill. So、uh, okay, so one day、um, I went to a, a restaurant and I got a very juicy cheeseburger and it was really good. So afterward, I went to the cashier and said, "Hey, I love your burger. Can I get a burger refill?"、Um, he was confused. He was like, "What do you mean a burger refill?" I was like, "Just like a free drink refill, but with a burger instead." And he was like, "Sorry, we don't do burger refill, man." That's where the rejection happened. But this time, I didn't run. I stayed engaged. I was like,、um, "Hey, if you give me a burger refill, I will come back here every day.、Um, I will tell everyone about it."、Um, that's really good for a free burger, right? He was like, "Oh, thank you. That's a good idea. But sorry, can't do it for you.、Uh, we, can't, we can't give out free food and get in trouble with my manager." Okay, I didn't want to get him in trouble, so that's where I left. And guess what? I wasn't scared anymore. I mean, it was still very awkward. But I didn't see dead people at that moment.、So、I'm like, wow, great! Only two days into this, I learned something really important all by myself. If I don't have to run after rejection, I don't have to feel too bad. Then, as I kept doing this, like strange things started to happen, like really weird things. People started to say yes to me, one after another. So, for example, one day I had a soccer ball in my hand, and I would knock on someone's door, and the guy opened the door, and I said,、um, um, "May I play soccer in your backyard?" <laughs> and, and he was like, "Sock in my backyard." And then he saw me. I, I had a soccer ball, shin guards, cleats, all decked out. <laughs> and he was like, "I guess so. Come on in." <laughs> I was like, "Now what?" <laughs> so I, I don't know how to play with soccer my, with myself in the backyard. So I, I just went in and bounced the ball off my foot and. Before leaving, I, I, I said, "How can you say yes to me?" He was like, "Dude, this is so off the wall. How can I say no?" <laughs> I'm like, "Okay." So there's another day. I was driving down the highway. I saw a police car, and I, I was waving at him. He was waving back. I'm like, "No, no, no! I want you to stop." So I put him over.、Um, <laughs> I said, "Officer, can I drive your car?" And he. I mean, I don't want to give you trouble. I'm not gonna, you know, drive it away. I'll just give it a spin. You know, I want to listen to a radio. And he was like, "I have never heard this before. Sure, why not?" <laughs> so I drove a police car that day, in, in the front, not in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Then there's another day. I, I just like,、um, I got a bunch of yeses in a row. I just got frustrated. I'm like, this is rejection therapy, not acceptance therapy. I gotta get a no somehow. What's one thing that no one's gonna say yes to me? Hmm. How about if I fly a plane? By the way, I have no idea how to fly a plane. I just want to get rejected that day. So I, I found an airfield and I saw a pilot-looking guy. And in the lobby, I said, "Sir, do you have a plane?" He's like, "Yeah, I do." I said,、uh, "Can I fly it?" He said, "Do you know how to fly?" I'm like, "No." He's like, "Yeah, it's okay. I'll teach you how to fly. You want to do it now?" I'm like, "Why? <laughs> What's going on?" As it turned out, he didn't have a commercial jetliner. He he had a gyroplane. For those of you who don't know, a gyroplane is like a miniature helicopter, like a motorcycle in the air type of thing. 
So this guy, he, he, just, he just bought his driver plane. He wanted to show everyone how awesome it is. And he taught me how to fly. It, it was amazing. I'll tell you more about it later. Um, <laughs> but uh, by the way, uh, I have video evidence for uh, all of these. Um, if you want to go to my YouTube channel, you can see them. <laughs> but speaking of video, I got to tell you a story. Um, you know, and uh, this is probably the most famous story, uh, uh, video. Because of the time, I don't have time to show it. But, um, the, one day I went to a, a Krispy Kreme shop. I went to uh, and talked to the uh, donut maker. I said, hey, can, I, can you make me donuts that look like Olympic uh, symbols? Just link them together. There's no way they're going to say yes, right? I was going to come in and make a joke and leave. Man, the donut maker took me so seriously. No matter what I tried, she couldn't say no to me. And in 15, in 15 minutes, she came up with this box of donuts that looked like Olympic symbols. Um, by the way, I encourage all of you to watch the, 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 the you know, the YouTube um, Olympic uh, donuts because it was, it was very funny and uh, famous. And that video, when I put this on YouTube, right, it went to the front page of Yahoo, front page of Reddit, Daily, uh, Daily Mail of UK, Times of India. It got over 5 million views in a, in a, in a few days. And the Krispy Kreme stock actually went up after this video <laughs> because that's a marketer's dream, right? And because of this video, I, it went viral. I started getting emails from people all over the world. And there are people who, you know, who are telling me, hey, what are you doing looking for rejection? I'm just like, I'm looking for rejection. <laughs> They're like, wow, this is so awesome, so inspiring. I, I'm doing my own things now. So I thought I was the only person who was afraid of rejection. As it turned out, everyone was afraid of rejection. And they're living their fear through my eyes. It's very therapeutic for people. For example, there are artists who wouldn't share her art, but she saw this video and, and she started sharing her art. She got picked up by national media. She was invited by the White House to go to get a show to DC in Washington, DC. It changed her life. And then there's a, there's a guy, he's, um, he started the, one of the most popular podcasts nowadays because he was like, I want to do something real. I want to do something, uh, something new. And there's a guy, he found his dream job within his, within his own company because he's, he's started acting differently. He started reaching for more than, 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 you know, than he thought was possible. And so all this type of stories got me thinking, wow, this is something really important. Something that, that if I can crack the nut, I can make some real changes in, in, in the world. So I spent the rest of 100 days rejection, and even in subsequent years, trying to just put myself in front of all kinds of situations, trying to get people to say yes to me without lying. I mean, if I lie, it'd be too easy. I want to stay completely authentic, but try to convince people. I want to see what can, make, uh, what, can, uh, what can make people tick. I even gave a TED Talk uh, a couple years back. It became the number three most viewed TED Talk of that year. I think number one and number two are, are Elon Musk and the Pope. Sometimes you're just not as cool. <laughs> what can you do? So I learned a lot about, I learned a lot of secrets. I'll share some with you. First is the answer to this question. What is rejection? What is the thing we're so afraid of, but if you overcome that fear, you can make some real changes in your lives? As it turned out, rejection is pretty much is a numbers game. It's a numbers game. Um, for the, for some, some days, I could ask for something absurd. Now, I would get a yes. Sometimes I could ask something pretty moderate. I would get a no. But if I want to get a yes, I just talk to enough people. Someone will say yes at, uh, to me at the end. It's almost uh, as if there's a number associated with every rejection. You go through enough no's, it becomes a yes. Speaking of number, do, we, do you have any Harry Potter fans here? Cool, yeah, there we go. How about the book? Anyone read the book? Good, okay. I'm not, I'm not surprised. Um, Harry Potter is the best-selling book in modern history. It, 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 it blew every other book series out of the water. And you would think a book that good, when it first came out, every publisher on earth would try to, try to publish the book, right? It's a gold mine. Nope, that wasn't the case. The author, her name's J.K. Rowling, she had to go through 12 different rejections to get her book published. Every rejection sounded similar. What, they try to write a children's book? This long? Oh, there are people dying in the book? It's about dark magic? Come on, try something new, get a real job. <laughs> it's on the 13th try, they also rejected her, but the chairman of the publisher handed the manuscript to his granddaughter, who would not put it down. She just kept reading and reading until she exhausted herself. That's where like, huh, maybe we should try this. So they published the first Harry Potter book under very low expectations. And the rest was history. Think about it. 
If it took J.K. Rowling's 12 rejections to get Harry Potter published, how many rejections do we have to go through to get ourselves published, to get our ideas published, to get our business published, to get our training published? Rejection is a numbers game. It goes through enough no's, it does become a yes. Then rejection is an opinion. It's an opinion. I think we need many things in this world. We need more um, love, sympathy, understanding, and courage, and definitely more bathrooms and free drinks. <laughs> but one thing we have plenty of is opinion. If you don't believe me, just get on the internet. Get to Facebook, turn on your TV. Everyone has something to say about something, and they can't wait to tell you how they feel about something. It's almost as, it's almost as if opinion is like the cheapest resource on Earth. It's completely renewable, too. But uh, rejection is nothing more than opinion and preference of the rejector. It actually says more about the rejector than the rejected. In these 100 days, I could, I could be the same person asking 10 people the same question. Someone will say yes, someone will say no. Someone will smile and give me a high five. Someone just couldn't wait to get away from me faster. I was the same person posing the same request. It says everything about that person's state of mind, or, or maybe what happened to him or her the night before, or maybe it's a lifelong of understanding or uh, education, needs, prejudice, who knows? It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with that person. But when it comes to rejection, we think it's all about us. We think, because we're the heroes of our own journey and we're the, we're, we're the um, center of our own universe. That's why every rejection felt like an indictment of who we are. Every acceptance felt like a confirmation of our merit. It's not, it's just an opinion. Then rejection, it's a source of knowledge. So um, I wrote this book a couple of years back. Um, I wrote the book not because I wanted to write a book or make money, I actually didn't make money. Um, I wrote the book because I learned so much. I went to pretty good business school. I thought I'd learn a lot about business in those two years. As it turned out, I learned a lot about PowerPoints and spreadsheets. Um, in these 100 days, I felt I learned more about business, especially when it comes to communication, negotiation, or even leadership that I did by business school. Um, I'll share some of the learning with you. For example, what do you do when people say no to you? What do you do? Most people do one of two things, fight or flight. Fight, I mean, I mean it doesn't mean fist, fist fight. It means you start to argue with the other person, right? How can you say no to me? No, you're wrong. But when you argue, that's not the best way to change people's minds because your emotions get involved, your opinions get entrenched. When was the last time you changed people's mind by shouting them down? It just doesn't happen, right? The other part is flight. It's even worse. If you, because if you run, not only you're not changing minds, you're actually at the mercy of your own judgment. You lose confidence. And there's a third way, which is you can ask why. You can try to find out what's the reason. By asking why, you're buying yourself more time, right? You're putting the ball back to the other, other court. And also, they're rejecting you not because they hate you, not because they're rejecting you as a person. If you can find there's some underlying reason, you can possibly turn the no into yes. For example, one day I had this flower in my hand. I went to, a, a, I went to this uh, guy's house, I just knocked on the door, and he opened the door. Um, I said, can I plant this flower in your backyard? Um, I didn't know why I like people's backyard that much. <laughs> uh, it's like my playground. Um, and he was like, oh, um, sorry, no. But before he could leave, I said, um, may I know why? He was like, yeah, um, I have a dog that would dig up anything I put in the backyard. I, I, don't want to, I don't want to waste your flowers. You want to do this, why don't you go across the street and knock on the door and talk to Connie? She's my neighbor and she loves flowers. I was so excited because I just got a referral. So <laughs> I went across the street and knocked on Connie's door and she was so happy to see me. Uh, half an hour later, there's this flower in Connie's backyard. You know, I hope it looks better nowadays. Um, the thing is, had I just left at the initial rejection, I would have thought of many reasons. Maybe I didn't dress up well, maybe I didn't speak clearly, maybe the guy didn't like me, he didn't trust me. As it turned out, none of that was the reason. The reason he, he, didn't, he said no was because what I offered did not fit his needs. And he liked me and trusted me enough to offer me a referral, which I converted. So again and again, I learned that if I just slow, calm down, right, and try to find why, I have a chance to turn no into a yes. Something, something else you can do, okay, is you can ask for something else when, when we get rejected. Ask for something less, not more. For example, uh, one day I went to this hotel, uh, the best hotel in Austin, and I went to talk to the uh, front desk lady. This is what she looked like, and she's a very nice person. I said, uh, um, can I have a free night here? Um, she was like, oh, okay, um, we don't do that now. Okay, I was thinking, when do you do it? 
I'll, I'll, I'll come for that promotion. Um, but I didn't say that. I was like, yeah, it's okay. Uh, can I take a nap in one of your rooms? She was like, sure. So she sent a bellman with me to one of their suites. I took a nap there. It was cool. Um, but the thing is, had I just come in and asked for a, a, taking a nap, she might have thought I was crazy. She might have still thought I was crazy. But the, but the thing is, I was able to get a yes because I asked for something less, right, I mean, after getting rejected. When we think about rejection, we'll think about it as something that's uh, uh, something terrible. It's a moment of failure. As it turned out, it's a moment of opportunity. Because when people are saying no to you, they actually feel a little bit bad. They feel a little bit indebted. So when, when, when you are trying to negotiate, when you ask for something less, basically you're negotiating. You're, you're making a concession. People will actually want to re return in kind. This is actually a pretty solid uh, study on this, that if you ask for something big, got rejected, then you ask for something less, the chance of you getting a yes on that request is actually a lot higher than if you ask for that request straight. So by the way, I can go on and on. You know, I talk about, uh, you know, in my book, I talk about 12 different ways to how to turn no's into yes and how to get more yeses and how do you uh, actually say no to people without damaging the relationship. In fact, if you do it well, you can actually strengthen the relationship and make the other per person a fan of you. But because of time, I do want to leave you the most important lesson I learned in 100 Days of Rejection. Two words, just ask, just ask. Remember I mentioned that I flew someone's plane? It was the best flying experience in my life. When I think about flying, it's all about going to the airports and a couple hours early and take out my belts and my shoes and make sure my pants don't drop while I <laughs> walk through that uh, cancer-inducing bone scanner. Um, <laughs> that's my flying experience. But that day, I had none of that. I flew like a bird. There's a minute, I was like only a couple feet above the cornfield. I feel I was a seagull looking for fish above the ocean. The next minute, I was like a thousand feet in the air. And I, I, there was a cloud around me. I was touching it. I was kissing it. I felt I was this eagle. It was amazing. But all this time, I just kept asking myself the same question over and over again. Wow, what if I didn't ask? What if I didn't ask? I would not have this great flying experience. I would not know this could exist even. What if we don't ask for things in life? Maybe companies not, might not be built or quit prematurely. Art might not be shared. Maybe business opportunities might be lost. Or promotions might not be had. The reason we don't ask for things is because we think rejection is terrible. It's just so terrifying. So by us, not, by not, so by us avoiding negative or achieving that positive, Right? That's just a lie. It's a lie we keep telling ourselves every day because when you're, not, when you're not getting out there and getting rejected, you're just rejecting yourself by default. And we are our worst rejecter. So no matter what happens, let the world reject you. Don't reject yourself. Then lastly, gifts. You know, rejection used to be this monster that haunted me my whole life. But as soon as I stopped running away from it, it became my biggest gift in life. Because now I get to go to some of the best universities uh, and companies in the world. I get to train the people how to become rejection proof. And this, as an entrepreneur, that's all I wanted. I'm even going back to my tech route. Um, I'm developing an um, a app, a, a software system. I want to turn every way possible to teach soft skills through, through, uh, through, this, uh, through challenges. See, I put myself in front of I learned all these things not because I read a book or take a course, and they helped, but I put myself in front of 100 people getting real rejections. So because I did that, I learned all these things by myself, and all the skills I had in the past just came to life. So by the way, if you are interested in um, beta test my program, I'm looking for your feedback, you know, connect me with link on, on LinkedIn. I will not reject you on LinkedIn. So, <laughs> and I would love to get your feedback because this is one of the best groups of people who really understand how to teach people. And I want to get your feedback. And, but no matter what, I mean, I want, I want to create a world where we're not afraid of rejections anymore. We want to create a world where we do things through, we, we learn things through doing. I'm going to invite all of you into that world. So um, next time, if you are afraid, maybe you have your own proposal, maybe you feel like there, there, there are things you want to do, but you, if you're afraid of rejection, Remember these principles and stories. It's going to help. Or if you have friends or loved ones or colleagues who are afraid of rejection, 
share the story with them. It's going to help. If it doesn't help, you can buy them donuts. It always helps. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for my story, guys. <laughs>